Now, I want to talk about some concepts that we may see in themes. You asked earlier in the class that do we need to derive the deformation equations in the exams using the integration method? The answer is no, because we don't have enough time to do the integration. But we need to understand what is the concept of deformation in the beams, how the equations are derived, and what are the relationship between different parameters. Like for this case, there is a beam that, are, that is subjected to two forces. We want to know what would be the boundary conditions if someone is about to use integration method in order to determine the deformation equation in this beam. In this case, if you remember, on the video we discussed about different cases, different scenarios about the deformation and slope. We need to see what we know about the deformations in this beam. So on the left side, do we know how much is the movement, the vertical displacement of this beam? Initially, we don't know that. So there is no given boundary condition for the deformation on the left side. What about slope of the beam at that point? Again, we don't know how much the slope of the beam at that point before solving the problem. But if you move to the right side, do we know how much is the deformation of this beam at the right end? It is zero, it is restrained. So one boundary condition is delta is zero at x equal to L. That is one condition. What else? What else do we know about the deformation of this beam in the structure? Like the way the beam is bending. How much is slope of the beam at the right end? Zero, it is fixed. What is slope? Slope is the first derivative of deformation, right? So in this case, we know that delta is equal to zero at x equal to L, and derivative of delta with respect to x is also zero at x equal to L. So this is going to be the right answer for this problem. Does that make sense? So this question could be repeated in different scenarios. We need to, again, review those concepts in order to make sure that we understand the concept of boundary conditions. Okay, that was one concept that I wanted to review. The other one is somehow related to that. Another beam, kind of similar to the previous case, this is subjected to two different loads. And we want to see what would be the expected power of x if someone is about to determine slope of this beam between point A and B. We know that loading, shear force, moments, slope, and deflection are related together using integration. Loading is related to shear. Remember, shear is integral of the loading. What is the power of loading in this case? This is a linear loading. The power is one. It is like, it is AX plus B. So the power of X in this polynomial is one. If we integrate it once, what should be the power of shear force in this problem? Two, what would be the power of moment? Moment is integral of shear. So that would be the three. What is the power of slope? Integrated one more time, that would be four. What would be the power of deformation function, the elastic curve in this case? It would be five because deformation is integral of slope. Loading is one, shear would be two, moment is a three, slope is four. So that is going to be the answer for this part, all right? And this could be repeated for many other cases. Like let me show you another one for instance. In this case, we want to determine how much would be the power of x in the elastic curve equation. The loading has the power of zero because that is a constant. So shear would be one degree up, that would be one. Moment would be two, slope would be three, and deformation would be four. If we want to determine a slope, that would be three. If you want to determine elastic curve or deformation, that would be four, all right? What about between A and B? Between A and B, there is no loading, it's zero. That means shear is going to be constant. So power for shear would be zero. Moment would be one, slope would be two, deformation would be three. So in that case, it is going to be cubic. And that could be applied to many other cases, all right? Maybe one more conceptual problem that I can talk about would be this one. This is kind of related to the discussion that we had, I think, in the 
very last course module. I ask you about how someone can determine the maximum deflection from the elastic curve and if these two properties are related together. And I saw different answers and good discussions over there. Let's look at that from mathematical point of view. Elastic curve is a function. We want to determine where that function is maximum. In order to do that, we need to derive that function with respect to x, set that equal to zero, determine what would be x value, then plug that x value back into the elastic curve, that would give us the maximum deflection. This is the process in order to do that. This question is somehow related to that. This problem says the maximum deflection in this simply supported beam that is subjected to a moment on the left side and a distributed load on the part of that occurs where, and there are these options. Where do we expect to see the maximum deflection? The maximum deflection happens where the derivative of that function is equal to zero. What is derivative of deflection? That is slope. So it is going to be maximum where slope is zero. Again, I want to show you some different types of conceptual problems. Do not underestimate the importance of conceptual problems. They look easy, but they are more important than just numerical problems. All right, thank you very much, and I'll see you on Friday for the exam.